Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel for another After Effects tutorial. So today I'm going to show you how I animate my backgrounds. This has been highly requested and I'm finally sitting down and filming this for you guys. This is super easy. Um, anyone can do it. You just need to have the Sapphire plugin. And if you don't have Sapphire or you don't have After Effects, I do have a link in my description for a free background pack that I've made a while back with a few animated backgrounds that you can use in your edits if you don't have access to these tools. But if you do, I'll show you how I make them. Let's get started. So for this first background, I have a little cloud image. As we can see, um, you can use any pictures that you want. I like to find mine on Pinterest. Um, Devian Art also has a lot of nice uh, texture packs and background packs. Those are super useful to use. Um, and I also sometimes make my backgrounds using uh, Mid Journey AI, which that could be a whole other tutorial. Um, I think that'll be my next one coming after this. But uh, for today, I just have the simple picture of a cloud uh, background. So what I'll be using for this one is Sapphire Warp Waves. So if I go into search in here, I'm going to be using S Warp Waves too. So at first, it's a little bit crazy, but it already looks cool. So what you want to do is basically add any kind of effect that will give some sort of movement in your background so that it's not just like a still image. Um, another trick you can do if you don't want to do any of like crazy effects is also just like slowly scaling it up um, to add movement, which I do sometimes, but I prefer to add um, effects like this. So this is just at the normal settings. For me, I think that's a little bit kind of fast and chaotic. So I'm going to switch the amplitude to 0.10 for A waves and then same here for B waves. And that's already very like subtle and nice. So let's see if there's anything else I want to change here. I might change the speed a little bit here because it's kind of fast. So I'm going to do uh, 0.3 on a phase speed you can just follow my um, my settings here and I'll do minus 0.3 here so you kind of have this very subtle movement here but I kind of want to have it a little bit more I'm going to change the frequency no I'm going to put the frequency down to 2 okay I like that this is a very subtle uh, movement but I think it looks really cool so if you want to have this just copy my exact settings over here I'm still going to make it slowly zoom in just a tiny bit because I do like uh, how that looks if you hear my cat meowing in the background I apologize now something else I like to do with my backgrounds I don't like to stop there I also like to use overlays I do have some overlay packs as well in my description um, this one I'm using here with the little star, uh, sorry, the little hearts is a free overlay available on my Gumroad and my Payhip. Okay, so I'm going to be adding this little heart overlay here. I'm going to put it on screen. So as you can see, that already looks pretty cute. I think I like it on add a bit more. Now, something I like to also do on all of my backgrounds is add an adjustment layer. And my favorite effects of all times is optic compensation. I don't know why, but I just think it looks so cool. So you'll check the reverse lens distortion because if you don't check this little box, it's going to be uh, rotating inward, as you can see here. But by checking this box, it's going to make it be the reverse lens distortion. And this is without, this is with. It just kind of adds like a cool, I don't know, I just really like it, so I always add this onto my clips. So then let's say, just for fun, I'm going to quickly add um, an Ariana mask in here. Okay, well, because the compensation is too big, it's making her look a little bit weird. So let me lower it like this. And as you can see, you already have a quite cool uh, scene um, and that was like super simple it took five minutes so like as long as you have cool overlays and a cool image for the background you do not need much um, to make something quite nice 
And then if you want to, you could use like a coloring on top of everything as well. And with a quick, a quick, um, a quick little coloring, you get something like this. So super simple. And yeah, that's how I do this first background. So there you have it. I'm quite pleased with this. I think it looks good. So I'm going to go to the second one now. So for this one here, I have a texture of pink sparkles that I used in my Barbie edit. So for this one, I'm going to add um, warp bubbles, which is another one that I like. Uh, warp bubbles. There's warp bubble one, but warp bubbles too, but I'm not quite sure what the difference is if I'm completely honest. So for warp bubble, this is what it looks like without changing anything. It looks really cool. Like you could keep it like this if you want. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit so that I make it so it doesn't distort my background image as much. I'm going to tune the frequency down to at about four. And then the amplitude. No, that looks weird. <laughs> the key with these ones, guys, is honestly just tweaking it until you think something looks good. Like, you can follow my exact settings, but there's so many different combinations of settings you could use that would look quite cool. I actually quite like this one. So I'm going to keep it as this. So it's just very subtle, but it's moving a little bit in the back. Um, so these are my settings if you want to copy. And then for this one, I'm going to show you something a little bit more complex that I like to do um, on certain clips, kind of like this one here. So what I use for these are called uh, alpha mats, and it's basically when you have a video of something that is black and white. And what we can do here is actually have the background underneath take the white portion of this video by using here in the track mats. We're going to put it on luma mat here as you can see and as we click play it's actually taking the picture the video my bad so what i'm going to do for this one is i'm actually going to try having my clip in the back be in black and white and then having my pink clip on top appear like so so I'm going to make it look a bit cooler, I'm going to change the levels of the bottom image just to make the contrast between the black and the white a little bit more. I might add some sort of glow, um, maybe a little bit of blur. I'm just doing these on the spot, don't know if they'll look good. I think this is kind of cool. Okay, I don't hate this. So next up, we're going to go with overlays. Um, I'm thinking I might use one of my Aurora overlays. This one is a paid overlay pack. I like to use these a lot. You probably recognize them from my edits. I'm actually going to change it to black and white. And then maybe add our screen. Hmm, I'm not sure if I like this. I think that's kind of cool. I mean, it totally depends on, um, it depends on what your clip looks like, right? It depends what scene you have. Here's another star overlay. This one is in my free pack. I'm gonna add this one on the screen. Let's see with the Ariana mask. I put these behind. Uh, I'm going to put this on top and the stars behind her. Just with overlays and the alpha mat, you can have a little bit of movement in the back and then it kind of appears into a cool background. So that's the second background effect um obviously we do not need to have ariana here and you can see just by itself how it looks 
but I think it's pretty cool and could be super fun for a cool like pink themed edit. So for my background number three, I'm have, using this image, which I love because I love to use cool holographic um, textures. And then I'm going to go and use S Warp Puddle for this one. And this one, when you just put it on, this is at the basic settings. It looks pretty cool. It's like a ripple of water. So what I'm going to do is I don't want it to be too ripple, ripply because it kind of takes away from the image and I think the image itself is quite cool. So I'm going to lower the amplitude to 0.3 and I'll lower the frequency to maybe let's say three just to make it easy. And then you have this cool little warpy, warpy moment, which I love. Um, you can tweak with the height a little bit, but I think I'm going to keep it yeah, I think this looks cool. I'm going to keep it at this. Um, I'm then going to add an overlay. I think I'm going to add my favorite overlay ever. This one is in my glitter overlay pack, which is a little glitter drip. I'm going to put it on... I'm going to put it on add. And here you have a cool animated background. I'm also thinking maybe we could even copy this warp puddle effect and paste it on here so that everything moves together. That's another possibility. Um, but this is another one that I like. It's super cool. S warp puddle. And then to see with the Ariana on top. Again, just looks super cool and neat. You can go ahead and add as many overlays as you want. I have a bunch of them. I like to, I just love to layer overlays on overlays. Like I have so many. Maybe this one I'll put on overlay. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. So this is how I do this last one just to recap we have s warp puddle on the bottom layers then i have this grid overlay and then my glitter overlay so yeah um this was my quick tutorial on how i do my animated backgrounds hopefully this helps let me know which one was your favorite i think my favorite was i think my favorite was the first one honestly it looked really cute so let me know in the comments which one you think worked best. Um, and again, I have a free background pack. I have free overlay packs and also paid packs um, if you're interested on my Gumroad. And comment down below um, what next tutorial you'd like me to make. Um, I might make... My next tutorial might be how I use Mid Journey in my edits and make cool 3D scenes. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Um, thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support. It means a lot. Um, I love you guys so much. Bye!